Let us now discuss the following set of operations. We will use union if we would like to return the combined results of the two queries and eliminate any duplicate row. We use union all if we would like to return the combined results of two queries but we do not want to eliminate the duplicate rows. Next, we use intersect if we only want to return the rows that are in the results of both queries and still eliminate the duplicate rows. And lastly, the minus if you would like to return the selected by the first query that are not in the result of the second query and still eliminate the duplicate rows. To perform any of the set operations we have discussed, the tables must be union compatible. With union compatibility, we mean that first, they should have the same number of columns, and second, the corresponding columns must have the same data types. All operations in our set operations have equal precedence. Oracle evaluates them from left to right and top to bottom. If you would like to specify another order, we can use parentheses. If we do not have an order by clause, by default, the result is sorted in the ascending order of the first column, except for union of. If we have an order by clause, it should only appear once and it should appear at the end of the entire statement and it can only accept column names or aliases from the first select statement or the positional notation in the first select statement. Take note that column names from the first query are used as the headers of our result cell. For example, if you would like to list the author ID and the name for authors of books that are in either family life or children categories, we can do so by using union. We can see that in our first statement, we are selecting the author ID, first name and last name, for those authors from the category family life. In our second query, we are selecting the same author ID, first name and last name, but this time for the category children. And the result of both queries, we are combining them using the union. And if ever they have um, entries that are the same for both of them, we are removing all of those duplicate rows, as we can see in the result on the right. In this example, we are just demonstrating that union compatibility does not necessarily mean that the columns should be the same. In this case, in our first query, we are selecting the title, the retail price, and category from books for books that are categorized as computer. In our second query, we are selecting the name, the ID, and the phone from the publisher table. As we can see in the right, we are just combining the two outcomes. But take note that union, com union compatibility means that we have the same number of columns. In this case, we have three columns. And each of the corresponding columns are of the same type. For example, title and name are both string or bar car. Detail price and ID are both number and category and phone are both bar car. Now let's take a look at the intersect operator. In this example, we would like to list the customers, both the ID and name, who live in Florida, who have placed orders that were shipped to Florida. In our first select query, we are selecting the customer number, last name, 
and then for first name from our customer's table from Florida. In our select query, second select query, we are selecting the customer number, customer last name, and then first name from the customer's table, join with the orders table where the ship state is equal to Florida. The result of the first query can be seen on the right. The result of the second query can be seen below it. Using intersect, we are selecting all of the data that appear in both of the cases. In this case, we can see that 1001, 1003, and 1015 both appear in our two select queries. That is why using intersect, they are the ones that will appear in our output. Let's now take a look at the minus operator. In the minus operator, we would like to list the customer number and the customer name of those customers who did not place any order. In the minus example, we're first selecting the customer number, last name, and first name from our customer table. So we're basically getting all of the customers in our customer table. And then in our select um, second select query, we're still getting the customer number, last name and first name, but for those customers who have placed an order that can be found in the orders table. And using the minus operator, we are just getting rid of all the customers who have placed an order. And the output can be seen on the right. Take note that switching the position of the component queries will give different results. So we should make sure that we are getting the right queries. In our previous example, if we try to switch the position of our queries, we will not be getting any data. In summary, we are able to discuss the following. We have learned how to update data in our tables. We have learned all about database transactions. We have also learned how to make use of comparison and logical operators, how to manage aggregate processing, and how to implement subqueries in our SQL queries.